Hello everybody and today I talk about the laptop that annihilated my bank balance. So the Microsoft Surface Pro's tagline has always been the tablet that can replace your laptop. And guess what needs replacing now? So my relationship with the Surface Pro was good while it lasted. This is the first ever Surface Pro, the first version. However, only a year in after using it, the obviously overpriced type cover just failed out of the blue. Two more years later, the whole thing just straight up died. It won't even power on now. And so I present you the laptop that replaced my Surface. This is the Dell XPS 13 version 9360. Now this is the single most expensive laptop I have ever bought in my entire life. Now why? Because I do want this to be a long-term investment considering how prematurely my Surface Pro died on me. So I'm probably not gonna buy a laptop in a very, very long time. All right, so I'll get the specs out of the way first. It's got an Intel 7th generation Core i7-7500U, 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's got a one terabyte SSD made by SK Hynix, Hynix? I don't know, I've never heard of that brand before, but it's still a one terabyte NVMe M.2 SSD. It's got a QHD touchscreen that's absolutely beautiful. So it's QHD, so it's not exactly full 4K. It measures 3200 by 1800 pixels. And apparently the screen covers 105.7% of the sRGB color gamut. Although my Spider 5 says otherwise, but it's good to know it's above average. It's got two typical type A USB 3.0 ports and also one USB type C port that has Thunderbolt 3. It also has a SD card reader and an audio jack. So now let's talk a bit about form factor. My old Surface Pro weighs 1.14 kilograms and this baby here weighs 1.3 kilograms. So it's only a bit heavier than the Surface Pro, although it's a full blown laptop. And compared to the Surface Pro, it's about an inch bigger both length and width wise and that's compared to the first ever generation of the Surface Pro which is smaller than the current versions. But the XPS gives me so much more screen thanks to the Infinity Edge display. Now comparing thickness, on the thickest part of the laptop, it's only a tiny bit about a millimeter thicker than the Surface Pro without the type cover attached. When you attach the type cover to the Surface Pro, the surface is obviously thicker than the XPS 13. So the XPS 13, given how small and thin it is, it slips easily into smaller bags. Now this version of the XPS 13 cannot be transformed into a tablet, although there is a slightly newer version, the XPS 13 2-in-1 version 93, 65, you can fold it all the way back and use it as a tablet. But I didn't get that version because it suffers a huge performance hit. It uses Intel Y series processors, which are significantly less powerful. Plus that version employs a fanless design. So I've read users on forums complaining about it. It's a massive issue because after they spend so much money on an Ultrabook, they just couldn't get any performance out of it. They just couldn't ever hit the theoretical maximum clock speed of the CPU. So now I'm gonna walk you through the build of the laptop. It has a solid aluminium top and bottom, and on the bottom you have your exhaust vents, so when you do use it on your lap, it just fries your thighs. And on the bottom of the laptop, you'll find a very fancy and mysterious XPS hatch, and when you open it, you'll find out it just conceals all the fine prints, such as the certifications and also your serial number. I mean, I get it, but it's on the bottom of the laptop. You're not even gonna see it that often. <laughs> And on the inside, because this is the QHD version, you just get one big shiny glass panel for the top part. And because it is a touchscreen and it's glossy, fingerprint magnet. And you have your webcam on the bottom bezel, so it's always looking up at you, which apart from the fact that it's a very unflattering angle, makes it look like you always have your laptop on the ground while Skyping. The palm rests are made from carbon fiber and they feel fantastic. It just has this kind of soft, rubbery, but not quite feeling to it. It feels amazing, but my only issue with it is it's an oily fingerprint magnet. Any fingerprint that gets onto it just doesn't ever come off, and I realize it's not the easiest surface to clean either. It takes quite a bit of scrubbing to get any prints off of it. But as of overall, I think it's a fantastically built laptop. Not one bit of it feels plasticky. The power brick is also amazingly small, and the charging tip has this really cool LED on it. There's also a button on the side of the laptop that when you push it shows you the remaining battery levels in five steps using five different LEDs, kind of like a power bank. As much as I love the design of this laptop, you cannot open the hatch with just one hand. You have to open it using two hands and you do have to kind of pry it open. The keyboard is probably my least favorite part of this laptop. The key travel is really shallow and it just kind of dampens towards the end. It doesn't feel that good. 
but it is backlit so it really helps if you're working in the dark. In terms of performance, I'm more keen on real life performance so I put this laptop through its paces by processing a batch of photos in Adobe Lightroom, all this while unplugged solely on battery power. Now I've never really had a smooth experience with Lightroom even on bigger powerful rigs so the experience on this XPS I'd say it's relatively good, average so to say. I also ran Adobe Premiere on it and it runs really quite smoothly. With full HD footage, I'm getting pretty consistent real-time playbacks even at full resolution. It does get slightly choppy at times, but that usually happens when I'm scrubbing too fast. I also threw on some Lumetri color correction effects and also a sharpening filter and playing that back at full resolution, it's definitely choppy, but the playback becomes smooth the moment I kick it down to half resolution. Rendering time is a tiny bit disappointing, but it's not too much of a surprise given that this laptop has no dedicated GPU, so there's no CUDA hardware acceleration. A 24 second clip took about two minutes to export with effects. Now, although the laptop performs decently, there is one pretty bad issue with this, and that is the coil whine is really bad. The coil whine only kicks in when you're doing really CPU intensive tasks. I haven't had it happen to me when I'm just web browsing or playing back videos, but when you are doing some heavy lifting on the laptop, the noise is quite annoying. Battery life on the XPS 13 is also really quite good. Now, of course, it depends on what tasks you're running on it, but if I'm just web browsing, I do get about seven hours of runtime before I have to plug it in again. So in conclusion, I'm quite happy with this laptop. The build quality is great and it does pack a decent amount of power and also a fantastic display in such a small form factor. Although recently, Dell just announced a new version of the XPS that sports the newer generation 8th gen Intel quad-core processors. And I just got this like two weeks ago. So that's pretty much my quick little show and tell. I wouldn't call it a full extensive review of the Dell XPS 13, but that's basically my thoughts on this laptop. So that's pretty much it for today. Any questions, any comments, just leave them in the comment section below. So that's it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.